everyone and welcome to another live video so today's what we're going to do is an abstract painting now i've been struggling to learn abstract i have been painting since i was a little kid and always strive to well see me coming on let's see There we go. Now I'm on. <laughs> Anyways, what I was saying was I've, I've always strived to make things realistic. And recently I have found that I really enjoy doing abstract painting, but it's not as easy as it looks. So I have this book here let me put this aside for right now and this is by everything goes book really um been copying abstract paintings from other artists and youtubers and this is like this is not done this is like the beginning the background and i kind of stopped there because i don't know where else to go and then i'll make something like this and i don't like the colors so I still, I'm just going to leave this here and come back to it. This one I finished. Not my favorite, but I finished it. And then these are still a work in progress. Uh, some of these I've finished, some not. And what I've been doing is, it's just copying other artists. Now, that is a good way to learn by copying other artists. But in the end, you're going to have to do something this yourself because you really cannot copy other artists. Uh, these are, this started as an abstract background and then I saw this cute girl on Pinterest and just copied that. <laughs> and this I kind of made up myself. And this is watercolor. And I like this. Uh, I have don't know yet what I'm going to do with it. And this one, let's see, I'm put a little bit over. This one I uh, started to do a collage with. Uh, it's not done. This one was just playing around, very simple. And you can see, and these were my um, Jane Davenport little girls that were on the napkins. Yeah, and I'm still working on this one. I just have to finish it. I did an abstract background and I used the hair as part of that and I'm going to blank everything else out. This I use watercolor and acrylic paints and stencils. This one, I really like the way it turned out and I didn't want to mess with it anymore. Although it doesn't look finished. Here I put some cats. <laughs> you can see some cats. Um, haven't done anything else with it it's still a work in progress some of these are finished like these these came out really cute I like that this is really cute background um, this one is done this one's not and this one had a hideous background so what I did is I just drew and started blocking out some blocks but it's not done yet this is a work in progress. Don't like what it's looking, so I left it alone for now. These two are finished. There's, uh, not that happy about them, but they're done. And so are these. And these I could still do some more work on. Um, this, I put a layer of of the clear gesso and it's very rough and and the reason why I did that is because you can take any pencil or something and it, it really marks good on there although this one's kind of this one has a lot some oil pastels on there so it didn't take the gesso that well I've learned to if you're gonna layer use your oils at the end these got really cute because they're copied from something I saw on Pinterest. It was a crazy background and I 
I drew the fish and the bird and blocked everything else out. And this you saw in my last video. This one's kind of whack. This one I really like. Very simple. And we're going to be doing something like this today. And it's... I decided I picked three colors. Not including black and white. I'm always using black and white. So, the colors I picked or green gold this is dioxinine purple and quinacridone, quinacridone nickel gold and they look well together so I decided on these and these are golden colors and one liquid tax I have a little I made a little paper out of all the colors I have and it's so much easier to pick to go through this and just pick the colors that I think I want to work with and I, I put it down to three colors sometimes the less colors is more simple when you get better to work with so what I'm gonna start with and for white I'm just using gesso and for black I'm using black gesso only because it's handy I have some other ones somewhere else I'm going to start with a um, this is like a stabilo pencil it's black oh first I'm going to tell you about the paper yeah this is the original paper It's 11 by 17 cardstock I bought this because it was clearance out and it's actually really good it's nice thick paper it's, it feels almost like poster paper and I cut, it, I cut it down to 11 by 11 square and taped off about an inch in that's gonna leave me two inches to put in a 12 by 12 frame so if if I wanted to frame it, I'd mat a two inch mat in a 12 by 12 frame. And I think that would look really pretty. And I've been making several like this, this size, and eventually I'm gonna come up with a good selection. So let's get to it. Um, oh, and another thing I'm using is some varnish. This is a gloss exterior varnish. And the varnish is gonna be to make my water soluble pencil not be water soluble well I'll explain now one of the first things you gotta think is composition okay we have if you draw it like a tic-tac and I'm doing this very lightly I hope you can see that yeah. this is a tic-tac form and you want to have your center point and you know your focal point not your center point this is this would be the center point right here you don't want your your focal point right here you want it a little bit off and uh, maybe around here okay and say we we, we just this will be what I, I would consider my focal point and we're gonna have some something going this way and a little bit of it here and let's see and maybe going down like this using this line and this line and this right here so this is just a guide to start so what I'm gonna do with this is I could either dip my brush in some white paint or in this case white gesso and just start smearing it like so now I did uh, paint gesso on top of these so the paint will go smoother and what I'm doing here is mixing it with the gesso and it's going to become permanent once I put it here and I'm gonna switch hands 
Now you're going to see me switching hands back and forth, mostly because, so you can see it better. <laughs> and um, it's, it's going to give me a, a more loose feeling to my work. Okay, so you, using the white gesso is kind of turning this, this black, uh, black gray. Now, I could also use the clear varnish. And with the clear varnish, what's it going to do? It's going to wet this like if it was water. But it's also going to make it permanent. Now, now I have a mark, and then I have this little scrubby thing right here. Now, I still want you to see some of the lines here. Now, I kind of like the way this area looks better than the smudgedness over here. So, I'm going to go ahead and draw some more there and use the... Now, up to this point, I still have no idea what I want to do, but I have limited myself with color. And my colors are green, purple, and gold, kind of. And that's a good... Uh, a good combination that's this purple right here and then we have the green and it reminds me of Mardi Gras colors this green gold is a beautiful color by golden I don't know if anyone else makes it but it's pretty and this Kanakadome gold is more of an orangey raw sienna kind of color so I think those colors look good. So I'm going to start with, with this. And just start painting, really. Painting in, in some spots. Right here. Now this might be a little bit too dark at first. So I'm just going to lighten it up with some white. Maybe put some here. here see even though I'm only using three colors you can make a lot of different changes just by using black and white and when it comes to abstract the more you do it the better you just have to keep doing it. A lot of people think, oh, a kid could do that. Yeah, probably a kid could do that because they don't know any better. But once you <clears throat> learn to do art for so long and you, you strive for that uh, realism, it's hard to think like a kid. Now I'm going to pick up some of this green and maybe put some right here. It's pretty right there. Eventually I'm going to cover all this paper with color. Go check, see what's going on here. Anybody? I have three people watching. Awesome. Now all these colors are very translucent and which is perfect for me. I like I like translucent colors on abstracts because you can see what's going underneath. 
All right, now I'm gonna start mixing this with some white. Now I'm using a very small brush. You don't have to. Now I'm going to mix, let me see if I can show you my palette here. This is the Cronacodon Gold. I'm going to pick some of that up. You know, pick some of this green up and see what happens. It's just a neutral light brown. Now I'm going to put water in the mix and do like a wash. I like that. Now I have a message for my viewers who speak Spanish. Um, I speak Spanish, so here it is. Yo hablo español, lo hablo muy bien, lo entiendo bien. Yo puedo leer el español. Si me dejan, um, me, de me dejan mensaje en español, yo los entiendo. El problema que yo tengo es no lo puedo escribir. Puedo tratar de escribir como yo creo que se escribe. Pero no va a estar muy bien. A mí me gustaría poder poner un uh, el close caption en español, pero para eso tengo que poder escribirlo bien. Por eso que yo no lo hago. Pero si me preguntan algo en español, yo te puedo responder, responder, responder en el próximo video. Y yo tenía una señora que me preguntó qué clases de papel de usar. Se puede usar cualquier papel, depende qué lo que está usando. Para los pinceles, lo más barato que hay es el papel de computadora. Así que se puede comprar en el Walmart, en el Home Depot. Otro papel que es bueno para pintar es el papel de watercolor, de colores de agua. Y como este, este se llama cardstock. All right, now I'm going to say everything in English. For my Spanish viewers, I speak Spanish pretty well. I can understand it pretty well. I can read it pretty well. I just cannot write it well at all. I have problems writing in English, much less in Spanish. So if you ask me a question in Spanish, I can understand it and I will answer it to you on my next video. And someone had asked what, what papers to use to do art that are cheaper, a cheaper way to do art than having to worry about buying expensive canvases and all that. The paper is different. Uh, you can use, you can start off with just a copy of paper. Copy of paper is fine for drawing with pencil. I like to paint on it to do my collage papers. Um, it, it's fine for that. The, for jelly printing is great copy of papers for jelly printing. Um, a little bit thicker than that would be sketch paper, which you could buy like a sketchbook or something, sketching paper. Um, I really enjoy using multimedia papers, which come in, let me see, I'll show you. You can get something like this, mixed media. Mixed media paper does really well with everything. Um, you, you know, if you want to paint acrylics or oils, you, you could gesso it, paint right on it. 
you could use it just like it is with some watercolors, pencils, whatever. And those papers are good to practice on. So I hope that answers the question. And like I said, if you want to ask me something in Spanish, go ahead and write it. I'm not going to answer you back in a written form, but I'll let you know in my next video. Okay. I'm liking this. It's a good mix. Now, I need to do the purple. Oh yeah, the purple. Now, to not make mud, this really needs to dry a little bit. So, pull out my dryer. Oh, uh, where is it? Right here. Hold on a minute. Okay, it's not completely dry, but it's thick enough, the paint is thick enough, it's not going to totally mix. I'm going to get a bigger brush this time, and I'm going to start working with some of this purple. And I want the purple near the green, kind of like this part right here. And I want a wash of it. When you mix purple and green together, it creates this really pretty golden color. Here I'm using some glaze just so I can mix it a little better. Now you can't mix too much because purple and green mixed together will create mud. But if you're careful, you get a really nice color. Now here we're going, seems to be following that, that initial line that I had. Look how pretty that is. I like the color that's coming through. Now around the edges I always like to be a little bit on the dark side. So I'm going to mix some black with a little bit of this purple and just kind of go around. wet this brush a little bit and kind of soften that edge. And I'm still not sure exactly what I'm doing. That's the beauty of abstract. More of a intuitive abstract. Mostly using some glaze here. Now this part right here is just 
common up odd color. So let me put some of this. Some Conocodone Gold. I close the door to my room so my cat don't get in here and starts crying. She's at the door now. I don't know if you can hear her. She's not happy. Okay. Now I'm going to go back with some more white and let's see this green. I think we can need some more green right here. Now, whenever you put a nice thick piece like that, you can always take, this is a, just a paper clip, and do some scratching. Look at that. I like that. Maybe, I don't know, like right here. This part's still wet. She gets these little crumbles of paint. So, how's it looking? I think it's looking pretty good. I like the color combination. I think I did a good job picking that. But it still has a long way to go. That's another thing. You gotta learn when to stop. But right now, I don't feel like stopping. So, this is some black. I kind of still want to emphasize these lines right here. Don't be afraid to move it around either. Try paper upside down. Sometimes it works for you, sometimes it don't. Usually I always end up doing it right the same spot where I started. Some glaze. And then, let's see, let's try this. It's a bottle of spray water. Just gonna spray. Get some clean paper towels. And that. Uh, Now I'm going to go back over it with my Black Stabilo pencil. And by the way, this is not really a Stabilo pencil. Call it a Black Stabilo pencil. It's called a uh, Scrib All. And it's by Generals, but it's the same thing. Okay. I got this one at Hobby Lobby. They don't have Black Stabilo pencils. They have the Scrib All which is pretty much the same thing. And you can see how easy it works on top of wet paint while I'm mixing a little bit of what's going on there. Now I'm going to take my, the varnish, 
kind of smear it around a little bit. This purple, I'm going to mix it with some white and maybe do like some highlighted areas. See how I'm using the lines that I originally made as a guide? Now, eventually, you can just completely erase those lines, but I prefer to keep them there to help me, to guide me in the right direction. I find this area really light and I'm going to lighten it up even more What's up? I like the, the contrast of the dark and the light and still I'm not that sure what I'm doing and that's okay this is to me this is fun this is relaxing I don't know if I'll be if I'll finish this whole thing this time around or not, maybe I'll still work on it after this video is over. Don't know. What you guys think? could always remove some paint just by dabbing. Or scratching. And here I got some of that in there. some highlights around. Okay, my little kitty cat's crying. If I let her in, she'll just come up to me and cry. <laughs> Alright, now I find that this is becoming a little too patchwork. So, and the color that I don't have very much of here is the green. So, everything seems to be radiating from here. It's that green gold.
And I'm kind of being quiet, I guess, because I'm just getting into it. Mixing that green gold with the purple. Here I'm going to scratch into it. And I think I'm going straight through the paper with this. Yep, because it's picking up a lot of gunk. That's okay. If I can't calm down, This is going. Nobody chatting. Four people watching. 38 minutes. All right. I think we're doing good. We're doing good. I want to have some kind of conclusion to this. And one of the things, like, it needs something. I'm not exactly sure what. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a card and pick up some white, some white paint, and watch this. Oh, I got three levels here. This was kind of like the center before because I had it this way. Yes.
And if eventually, if I don't like this, all I gotta do is put my gesso all over it and start again. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm starting to like it. I'm starting to like it. Um, it's looking pretty cool. I think so. Let me wet this a little bit and maybe some of this black. black around the edges and you're going to see what I mean when I take this tape off it's going to look really cool but it needs to blend in a little bit more so I'm wetting it and I'm rubbing it and adding some white Pick up some more of this purple. Make this part right here. Right. And you see how I'm working fast? Working fast keeps you from thinking too much. And with these things, you will think too much. I'm gonna pick up some more of this green. And here. And this brush is way too small into a bigger brush. <clears throat> now don't feel like you have to go out there and buy some uh, golden paints. They are very expensive. I happen to have a collection because I have been hoarding them for years and never use them because they're my precious. Well, my precious are, are getting stale. Some of them are starting to, yeah, they, they start to get gummy and not work too good. So it's not good to hard things and say so whenever I'm, I'm, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save them for when I make my masterpiece. Well, sometimes that masterpiece is just years away or may never come. In the meantime, your expensive paints are sitting there deteriorating okay I think I'm done I need to make some marks though before I finish and this time I'm gonna do it with the this black grease pencil and You see how these, these black marks are really thick and wide, and these are going to be thinner. Oh, that's one thing I hate about these. They're so soft. Okay. Right there. that's it I'm not doing nothing else to it and it's probably it's not gonna be the best thing in the world but it's good for my first try well it's not really my first try but my first try your first try and here's the reveal 
Now when you pull the tape, you pull away from the picture like this. So if it catches on the paper and tears it up, it'll tear it on the edge and not, not where it's painted. Come on. Let me try this edge. I have no nails right now. See what a difference it makes when you have a border, a nice clean border. And there it is. I don't think I should do anything else to it. Ta-da! So I hope you enjoyed that and um, tomorrow I'll make another one. Maybe some different colors this time. A different concept. This is one way to do it. There's a million and one ways to do abstract. Uh, I've been watching a lot of videos. There's the pretty abstracts that I call, which ones I like. <coughs> and then, <coughs> ooh, excuse me. <coughs> and you got the muddy ones like this, your greedy ones. But I like this kind of looks like a person. This is the head, body, the hand. He's got a spray bottle on top on him and he's spraying. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Yeah, that's me spraying my bottle. <laughs> All right, thank you for watching and have a good night.